Now there's an element about today's Girl I Like for Goddard Glasses episode that might be overlooked, but I think actually solves a problem that I've seen quite a few people bring up. Now, I myself don't find it that much of a bother, as when I watch anime, I kind of expect things to maybe be over-exaggerated, maybe overreaction. So a girl coming to school every day without her glasses or breaking, I mean, in just two episodes, she's already had to replace a couple of pairs. I say you're just over-amplifying that forgetfulness, and as someone who used to work for a boss who every single day forgot something she needed, sometimes two or three times in the day. I just say, I've known people as ridiculous as that, even though, yes, you're amplifying her forgetfulness. But in this episode, it's very quick, some people might even gloss over it, but I think it solves an issue for these people who maybe can't suspend their sense of disbelief to the point where a show they normally might enjoy, this cute little romance story between a couple of young people and their forgetfulness adventures, the idea that Komura in this episode, when seeing Mie, she has her glasses, oh, that's that's a first for us, you know, she usually doesn't have it. It turns out that the anime is just directing it as only showing the days that she does forget her glasses. As he says, most days he doesn't have to help her. Most days she does have her glasses. And this little moment, this little confirmation, might be something people will say, what's the big deal about it? Up until this point, if someone would have in the comment section said, oh, the anime is probably just directing it as only showing us the day she does, most people would say, no, you're just trying to make excuses, the girl is just an absolute idiot, she, d you know, which is the anime, like, there's no way someone would realistically be able to afford 300 and some odd pairs of glasses a year because of how much she either forgets or breaks them. But the idea of confirming that 100% that the anime is just showing us the day she forgets because that's the days the cute adventures take place is honestly a thing that actually kind of solves the issue. I mean, I don't really have, I didn't have an issue with it prior. I did think, yeah, they definitely are like, how the hell, why don't they just wrap it around her neck? But that little confirmation goes a long way to solve really the only issue that might have been left in the show, as the production has definitely cleaned itself up. There's so many times in this episode, you think the episode one cameraman would have been jumping around, zigzagging around. I actually think this show has fixed any issues that might have been there. And honestly, the sky's the limit at this point. Full live reaction episode 4 of The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses is available on my Patreon if you would like to see my full and cut thoughts as I watch today's pretty great episode. I honestly, I might even put this one as one of, if not the best. Like, it's definitely in the top two out of the four we've seen so far. Even though maybe it didn't make me laugh quite as hard or maybe make me melt quite as much as previous episodes, there's just a level of consistency about this episode that really has me excited for the remaining episodes. And the first thing I want to jump into is the fact that I love how they're just going about this relationship. I mentioned it last week where you thought discount Lelouch from Code Kiosk here, Ozma. I love Ozma. I think he's honestly best boy in a way. But, you know, you can't deny there's some Code Geass level influence in that character design. You know, most shows would have made him like, hey, pretty girl, I'm going to be, oh, this chap, come on, push him away. He's a loser, right? That's usually how you write that. And his character design, you just kind of spark that, oh, he's the pretty boy popular guy who's going to shit on Komura and immediately became his wingman. Even if Komura doesn't really understand that he is being a wingman more often than not. I, I appreciate the fact that even in this episode when he like, you know, the they're trying to hang up the poster and then he comes in, tall boy, fixes it for him. And, you know, he's honestly just being nice in that moment. And we get this really sweet moment where she says, I wouldn't want you taller because I couldn't look at you dead in the eyes, right? There's these little moments and rather than making anything potentially drama filled with their will they won't they, we all know 10 years from now, they're getting married. Like, let's just be honest. We already un understand that. There's this moment, which is probably my favorite moment I've seen, a period, out of all four episodes, where there's this girl who pops up in the hallway saying, hey, Komuro, you sit next to Mie. She forgot her glasses in the bathroom. Can you give it to her, right? And because she puts them on his face, he gets all disoriented, and he does, like, the hand press against the wall. You know, the forward move of, hey, girl can I have your number? And she honestly makes a pretty fun joke like, oh, that's bold of you. I thought Mie was going to blow a gasket. I thought someone was getting slapped or aggressively pushed. I mean, she was running and rushing in there when she heard his name. And what we end up getting is probably one of the sweetest moments from her as a character that really highlights how much she's into Komra. She pushes him away like the softest girl ever. And then as he's kind of like disoriented, she's like, well, I don't know why I did that. It just, it really symbolizes how hard she's crushing for him. And for a show that normally would just show you from Komro's perspective of how much he's into her, 
They've actually, over pretty much every episode, shown at least one moment, sometimes a few different, where from her perspective, you actually feel like she's crushing just as hard. Whether it's him sending the picture of the heart cloud and seeing how happy it makes her light up in the room, it would have been easy to just see her do a little smirk and, you know, see our boy freaking out that maybe that was too much like many anime would go, but instead, they're showing it's pretty equal, all things considered. And while it is funny that our boy's already realizing that he's gonna have to have one mad job if he's gonna have to replace so many pairs of glasses, I appreciate the fact that, with such a simple moment, it makes you understand that, okay, we're just watching someone who is ridiculously forgetful, more so than your average person, but she isn't forgetting every day, and I like the fact that they did reveal that. Maybe they should have revealed that maybe around episode 2, just so some people who have been a little more up in arms about it, like I said, I didn't really have an issue with it, but I can see... Maybe the people who are like, okay, maybe it's a little too forgetful for my liking. I mean, there's only so much that I could take before I dip, which I get it. I mean, I, I was saying that earlier. I was like, bro, she is way too much work. Like, you gotta find someone who's not forgetting every damn day. But I like the fact that it does solve what could be seen as an issue for many people. And even though it wasn't necessarily an issue for myself, this reveal does make me appreciate the series more. Because now I realize that it's just anime showing us the best of the situation that we're trying to present. Which is the forgetfulness, which then brings these two together. And we get the whole cute dynamic. And the fact that they're not really using the school setting in the typical way you see in anime... Well, yes, sometimes we see them in the gym, or sometimes we see them at the nurse's office. In general, the school is just really a backdrop. The thing that's always front and center is just these two interacting with each other, and I appreciate that these two characters together are strong enough to be interesting. We don't need to have watching them play a basketball game or watching them do these ridiculous scenes that, like a lot of school anime would do. Instead, it's just a cute adventure. It's wholesome, it's innocent, and I really appreciate what they're doing with this show. This isn't going to be my anime of the season or anime of the year by any means, but what started as a show that I was uh, cautiously interested in, I was like, okay, episode one has its issues, but it's fun, it's cute, has actually turned into something that feels very fresh. It feels different than what you typically see, and I have to say, I actually find the show to look quite beautiful. I mean, we have three episodes out of these four that I legit think look good, but this one, it's good. It really is. Mr. Clean makes that school pop out visually. It's sparkling clean every damn time you look at those hallways. But most importantly, it's one of the more consistent shows of this season, and it's not even close. I'm liking this one. I really am. I think it solved an issue that many people have been criticizing, and hopefully... People are gonna just enjoy this one going for it because I'm really enjoying my time with it. But let me know what you feel down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more videos to the channel. And like I mentioned, full live reaction to today's episode is available on my Patreon if you're interested. And hey, while you're there, you can also get a video shout out. So today we have Ender Wolf, Hishiro Shin, Ed Vargas, and A. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.